Matthew chapter 27, and I want to lift the 22nd through the 23rd verse. Matthew chapter 27, verse 22, 23. If you have it, say, I have it. If you don't have it, uh, hurry up. Amen. Matthew chapter 27, verse 22 and 23, and it reads like this. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah, Pilate asked. And they all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate? But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. For a few moments, I just want to preach from the subject of made up minds. Made up minds. Come with me to Calvary. We will find an all too familiar scene of a black man being lynched by the government. The only crime he's guilty of is doing the will of his father, which poses a threat to cause disruption to the crookedness of the empire. Uh, we would see, if we would go up just a few scriptures, just a few verses before. A question is asked multiple times, who do you choose? Jesus versus Barabbas. The holy versus the unholy. The taker rather than the giver. Crucify him, crucify him. The soldiers would use weapons to inflict harm upon his flesh. From bystanders, words are spoken out of just plain ignorance to attack his psyche. All of this happening while he is carrying the instrument of his execution. It is on the cross of Calvary. It is on that crux quadrata, that sacred tree, that Jesus is lifted from the earth. His arms are stretched wide. Nails are pounded into his hand and his feet. His body is bruised, broken, and beaten. And I would suggest that it is here that Jesus begins to experience sobering moments of cognizance that his mission, uh, the reason in which why he has come to earth has now been lived and now he must die into fulfillment. I wish I had a talk to me church. Uh, Jesus, that sacrificial lamb, he was born to die. Jesus, the kinsman redeemer, was born to be betrayed by those that knew him least. Jesus, the wonderful counselor, was rejected and abused. He was left neglected and thirsty by those that would benefit from him the most. Uh, Jesus, my Jesus, Jesus, your Jesus, a man that looked like you and I was left hanging on the cross feeling uh, neglected and feeling disconnected from the God of his salvation uh, well what we would find here as we begin to look at the text is that we find a people with made up minds uh, if I just wish I just wish that I could move back into the perils of time and could interview these people uh, what I would ask them is really only one question uh, and the question choir is what is it that happened in the span of a week Ah, uh, man. Uh, I said, what is it that happened in the span of a week? Did he mess you over on Monday? Uh, did Jesus trick you on Tuesday? Uh, did he do you wrong on Wednesday? Uh, what happened in the span of a week? Uh, did he talk about you on Thursday? Did Jesus do something to give you fear 
on Friday. I, I just want to know what in the world happened in the span of a week. It was just last week you were crying Hosanna, Hosanna in In uh, just a few days later, you have changed your tune. And so if we were to back up to chapter 25, Jesus is speaking in parables. And the high priests and elders, uh, let me tell you what they do. They began to conspire against him. Uh, after the conspiracy, here comes Judas. Uh, Judas was the one uh, that was used to help the God's plan come to pass. But he was blinded by the opportunity. Well, really, the Bible says that he was possessed by a spirit, and that spirit blinded him of the opportunity to profit from Jesus' betrayal. And really, this is a good word for us that, that we must be careful of those that are around us because everybody that is in our crowd is not in our corner. Uh, I wish I had somebody to help me here. Uh, everybody who comes off as friendly is not your friend. Uh, folks can smile in your face. Folks can eat at your kitchen table. Uh, but you can always go based off of what you see and what you feel. But what you've got to be able to do is check people's motives uh, church and I just asked you this morning when was the last time that you interviewed some of your so called friends uh, when was the last time you asked some people around you who know the most about you uh, some questions? Uh, when was the last time you issued a non-disclosure? And may God give you a divine discernment to know the people and the motives of those who are around you. Uh, Judas, he agrees to betray Jesus, not for the biggest house, not for the nicest car, but Judas agrees to betray Jesus for just 30 pieces of silver. That evening, y'all don't mind if I tell the story, do you? Uh, I think that's what we came in here for, in it? Uh, that evening, it is Passover, and the disciples come around for a candlelit dinner. Jesus, being the cunning brother and prophet that he is, says to his disciples, uh, listen, I love y'all, I really do, but one of y'all ain't right. I, I, I love you, I love you, I know all about you but 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 one of y'all is gonna sell me out for some chicken and change uh, come on somebody I, I, I love you but one of you is getting ready to betray me and I would suggest uh, please hear this if you don't hear nothing else get this I would suggest that the brilliance of Jesus is the control of his temperament while knowing the details of his suffering Oh, man, I, I think that was so nice. I've got to say it twice. I said the brilliance of Jesus is the control of his temperament while knowing the details of his suffering. Jesus knows that Peter is going to deny him. Uh, Jesus knows that Judas is going to betray him. But notice that Jesus did not lose his cool. Uh, Jesus did not pop his lid. He did not blow a gasket. He did not begin to speak in other tongues. But Jesus kept his cool. And when Judas asked Jesus, would it be me? Uh, I like the message version. Jesus told Judas, stop playing games with me. And my prayer for you this morning is that God would give you a boldness to tell the enemies in your life to stop playing games with me. Uh, I wish I had some help here. Is there anybody here that says from this day on, I'm getting 
ready to tell folk to stop playing with me. Uh, don't do me like that. Uh, stop playing games on my phone. Uh, y'all, y'all must not be up against nobody. Stop playing games in my face. Uh, stop playing games with my life in my livelihood. Stop playing games. I, I serve a risen Savior that says I will show you something. Uh, uh, stop playing games with me. Uh, and so it is after they have their last supper together. Jesus goes to pray in the garden called Gethsemane. Uh, it is after all of that that Jesus, I'm sorry, Judas comes and betrays Jesus with a kiss. Uh, Jesus then is taken into captivity. He's presented to the high priest and he is accused of blasphemy. Jesus, uh, Peter denies Jesus three times that he knows him. And then after the betrayal, it, we have done all this to work our way up to chapter 27. Uh, it tells us in chapter 27, and then morning comes. Uh, morning coming is significant because God is known for making profound moves at the dawning of new days. Uh, it is in the morning that the priests and the elders seek to put Jesus to death. It is in the morning that Judas must now deal with the consequences of his actions. It is in the morning that Jesus is set up to fulfill the will of God his father. Uh, come with me now. Come with me now. We move from outside and we move into the, into the court. And on one side of the court, there is Pontius Pilate, the governor. And on another side, you have the chief priest and the elders. And after their questions, Jesus, and after they question Jesus, Pilate is amazed at how Jesus handles himself in the face of adversity and his sentence of death. It is through this amazement that Pilate enters into the moment of the feast. Uh, uh, he enters into the festival of Passover where the people could choose to pardon any prisoner. And can't you see that Pilate is setting the stage with Jesus on the right, with Barabbas on the left. Uh, can you hear the murmuring of the crowd? Uh, can't you smell the, confu the, the collusion of men? Uh, can't you see what is going on? I told you we have Jesus on the right and Barabbas on the left. Pilate then makes an offer to the people and he asks, do you want the murderer or do you want the Christ? Uh, do you want Barabbas or do you want Jesus? And I would like to make the claim. I would like to stick my fork right here if I could and make the suggestion that these people who just a week ago were crying Hosanna, Hosanna, probably would have chosen Jesus. Uh, and so to answer that question that was raised just a while ago of what happened in a week, what well, I would suggest that nothing happened in a week, but minds were made up in a moment. Uh, they went from loving Jesus last week to hating him in the moment. They went from praising him last week to cursing him in the moment. They went from lifting him last week to tearing him down in the moment. Uh, and I don't know about you, but uh, I want to caution you, church, that we would not be like the 
his people, praising God this week and forgetting about him next week, coming to church this week and not coming back till Mother's Day. Uh, I wish I had a witness in the house uh, uh, telling God that you love him this week, but going all next week and not talking to him. Is there anybody in the building that can just give God a little praise right here? Because you say that God has been too good for me to change my mind in a moment. Uh, and so Pilate here is the embodiment of being in a position of power with no control. Uh, he's trying to help Jesus and my spiritual imagination. I can see Jesus giving Pilate a bodily gesture like only a brother can and saying, brother, I, I appreciate it. Uh, you, 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 you gave it your best shot. You did all that you could do, but the people were not able to see what they were doing. And that's because it was not meant for them to see because all of this has been a divine orchestration for God's redemptive work to be fulfilled in the earth. Uh, and so as I make haste to my close, as we would consider our text, when Pilate saw that there was nothing that he could do, he went and he got himself a bowl. He filled that bowl with water. And when it was filled with water he washed his hands uh, and that washing of hands is significant because he says that the decision that y'all made has not been on me uh, the blood uh, that of Jesus is not going to be on my hands and I just want to know when was the last time you washed your hands of something when was the last time you wash your hands of some people uh, yes I did the best that I could do uh, but it's above me now uh, I tried all that I could try but it's above me now I said all I could say but it's above me now somebody you came in here with some guilt and some shame but I tell you that you came to a place where God is able to make you clean. You came to a place where you can give your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Is there anybody in this church this morning that says I'm getting ready to wash my hands of some stuff? Yes sir. And so it is through this act the transference of blood went from Pilate to the people. But not only did it go to the people, but it also went to their children. Uh, you got to be careful of what you put on yourself and volunteer your children for. Ah, oh, man, y'all didn't hear me with all these children in here. There's some parents. There's some grandparents. I said, you got to be careful what you put on yourself and volunteer your children for. Because to these people, Jesus was just a mere mortal, but they had no clue at what was about to happen. Pilate had clean hands, but a guilty conscience. Pilate washing his hands meant that I'd rather have despair in my heart than blood on my hands. And what the people did not know was that when they put Jesus' blood on their hands, is that they were actually setting themselves up for a divine reversal of Jesus making his blood available to those that would crucify him. And man, some of y'all, y'all been sitting there all morning, but you really ought to be able to give God praise for every divine reversal in your life. You really ought to be able to give God praise for every time you did wrong but God came in and turned it for every time you didn't do what you were supposed
supposed to do, but God came in and turned it. For every time you went somewhere that you weren't supposed to go, but God snatched you out. Is there anybody in this church that can say, I praise God before the divine reversal? Ah, uh, come on, I've got about five witnesses, uh, but maybe I can get ten. Is there anybody that can praise God uh, that God has taken you out of some shady situations? Can you praise God because he's taken you out of some low places? Uh, somebody ought to praise him for a divine reversal in your life. Somebody said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. Somebody told me it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Somebody take 10 seconds and thank God for the blood. Uh, come on, come on. I said thank him for his blood. Is that the best you've got? I said, thank him for the blood. A blood that can take everything away. Thank him for all his blood. Uh, yes, sir. Woo. Hey, hey. Thank you for his blood today. Yes, sir. Jesus. <laughs> he makes his blood available to those who would crucify him. Jesus makes his blood available for us in 2020 that, uh, that whatever we need, his blood is able to cover it. And it is here, it is here, I see you helping me even in the comment section. Uh, it is here that Barabbas is released and Jesus is handed over to be crucified. The soldiers messed up. <laughs> Because they stripped him of his clothes. And they said, uh, we're going to put a scarlet robe on him. Uh, the soldiers didn't even know uh, that scarlet robe is actually a sign of royalty. Uh, don't you see how God will use the enemy to remind others of who you really are? Folks thought that they could talk about you. Folks thought that they could beat you down. But really, God was just using them to remind you of who you are. Somebody said, who am I today? I'm so glad you asked. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and not the borrower. They handed him over to be crucified. They began to twist thorns to make a mockery of his lordship. <laughs> and they gave him a crown for a king. <laughs> and it is here that Jesus now must carry that 100 plus crown cross. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, to the paradox called Calvary. Bloody and beautiful Calvary. Those execute, executed and crucified. Calvary. It is at Golgotha, this place of the skull, that Jesus is hanging between two thieves and he's lifted from the earth and I don't know if you ever thought about it but I want to tell you that there was a sound at Calvary there was a sound of those mocking his lordship and gambling for his clothes there was a sound at Calvary of a robber being asked to be remembered in paradise there was a sound at Calvary of Jesus' body being bruised and beaten with a cat of nine tails 
there was a sound of the weeping and the wailing women at the feet of Jesus. There was a sound at Calvary when my Savior cried out because he felt forsaken. There was a sound at Calvary when he yielded his spirit and the earth began to quake. The earth began to rock and reel like a drunken man. There was a sound at Calvary that the thunder rolled, yes sir, and the lightning flashed. There was a sound at Calvary when the veil was torn. I wish I had a church in here. There was a sound at Calvary of those that could not see that Jesus was the Son of God. And it was at the time of his death that then they believe. And church, if I can, uh, just give us the quick version of the story. It was a tough six hours, but Jesus died. I said Jesus died. I said Jesus died. Didn't he die? Our Jesus died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the moon was red as blood. He died until the earth shaked. He died, they say, all night on a Friday. I wish I had somebody that could get excited right here. I said he died all day on Saturday. He died all night on Saturday. But I've got good news for somebody. And the good news is that that's not how... The story ends. I said the good news is that he did not stay dead. But do y'all know what happened? It was an early Sunday morning that they went to the tomb. And they found that the stone was rolled away. And they went and looked in that tomb. That borrowed tomb at that. And they said, where is Jesus? And they said, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? He is not here, just like he said. And I've got to get up out of here. But is there anybody on this Sunday morning that can praise God with me? Because he got up. Man, that's the best y'all got for a risen Savior. I said he got up. I said he got up with all power. I said with all power in his hand. Come on, talk back to me here. Is there anybody glad that Jesus got up? They thought that they could kill him, but he got up. They thought that they could hold him down, but he got up. But I've got some even better news. Not only did he get up, but he's coming back again. I said he's coming back again for you and for me. He's coming back again for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back again for the sinner of all kinds. He's coming back again and we're going to go home to a place called glory. We're going to go home where the roads are paved with gold. Somebody praise him, not only because he died, but because he got up. Hey, I just wonder, is there anybody in here that has their mind made up that they're going to give God the praise for the rest of their days? Is there anybody that's got their mind made up that I've decided to choose Jesus? Is there anybody that's got their mind made up that living he loved me, dying he saved me, Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rise, and he justified, freed me forever. And one day, come on, somebody help me say, one day, one day, he's coming back. Oh, what a glorious day! Come on, if you're glad about it, come on, let's give Jesus praise 
in the building. Come on. A resurrection praise. Come on. Y'all clapping. That's cute. But a resurrection praise. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. He's worthy from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. I don't know about you, but I've, I've got my mind made up that I'm going to follow Jesus. There's somebody else, there's somebody in here, even as the music begins to play, standing all over the building, if you are able. There's somebody in here, you need to give your life to the Lord. Or perhaps you need to rededicate yourself to God. Won't you come on up to this altar today? We've got people that want to receive you. We got people that want to receive you. There's somebody you're saying, you know what? I've been tripping. I've been acting like I don't know God, but God been so good to me. I'm going to fix that today. So won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come all over the building? There's somebody you're saying, I need a church home. Yes, the pastor didn't preach, but the same anointing, the same glory, the same power that you feel even now is here in this place called friendship. Somebody just ought to say, we back, we back, we back. Okay. Okay. Yes. So somebody, won't you just do me a favor, be a little mini evangelist, be a baby evangelist, and just ask them, say, neighbor, are you saved, and are you sure? Come on, get their response, get their response, get their response. If they looking crazy, if they looking funny, come on, drag them on down here to this altar. I want to tell you, hell is real hot. <laughs> Y'all thought it was hot this week. Oh, but hell is hot. The hell is hot. And... Ain't no need to waste Jesus' blood dying on the cross for you to go to hell. Come on, come on, come today if you will. Come, 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 come. If you need somebody to walk with you, ask them, say, neighbor, won't you walk with me? I promise they'll walk with you. Come, come, I'll come get you myself. We would love for somebody to give their life to Christ. Come on, just one, one, come on. Yes, sir, I hear it. Come on, somebody said, I am, I am free. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No longer bound. No more chains. Chains holding me. My soul is just a blessing. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Our pastor has requested that all high school and college students, won't you come on to the altar? We want to cover you. High school and college students, come, come, come. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come on. Won't you clap for them even as they come? Ooh, they looking good. No more chains holding. Said my soul is resting. Come on, they still coming. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Everybody here. Here's what we're gonna do. It's good to see y'all. It's good to see y'all. <laughs> I like that response. I like that response. Here's something that I want y'all to uh, do before we pray. Look at you, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I want y'all to know this, right? The pandemic has been hard, and we all been trying to figure it out, and we're doing the best we can. Amen. I want you to know this from on behalf of your church, but especially on behalf of myself and 
even Minister Madria, that we are here for you. For real. We're here for you. And if we don't have your contact info, please make sure that we get it today. I get it today before you even leave from up here. We're praying for you. But most importantly, I'm believing in you. I'm believing in you because you, we, we are the future. I, I wish I had a church that understood that. I said, we are the future. And even some of the other younger ones who are here, they are the future. And I really believe that no eye have seen, no ear have heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God is going to do in you. Not just in the church, but even in the world. We need some sanctified people in the world that can do business and practice medicine and law. And Come on, y'all not hear me. This is one of the most gifted generations out here. And you're looking at some of the brightest that we've got. And so I'm just believing, I'm believing that God is going to continue to give you favor in everything that you do. I know we're in a pandemic, but here's what I want you to do. Parents, stretch your hands this way towards your folks. Everybody, stretch your hands this way towards our young people. And won't you just begin to take a moment before I pray over them? Won't you pray over them audibly? Come on, let me hear the prayers. Come on, let me hear the prayers. Ah, yes, sir. Come on, just a little bit harder, won't you? Come on, just a little bit more intense, won't you? The enemy is on the young people's trail, but we rebuke the enemy even now. We tell the enemy you can't touch him because the blood of Jesus is on him. Come on, some of y'all, maybe it's been a while since y'all been in the church atmosphere, but young people at this altar, won't you just begin to lift up both of your hands? Come on, that's what I'm asking you to do. And don't look at me, but just close your eyes even now. This is a moment of surrender. This is a moment of receiving. We don't know what you might be going through, but God does. And so even as we're praying even now, what we're really doing is just standing in agreement with what you've been praying for standing in agreement with what has been keeping you up at night we're standing in agreement that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper and every tongue that rises up against you god shall cause it to be condemned and now i speak a blessing over you that you will be blessed in the city come on people out there that you will be blessed in the field that people will call you blessed that cities will call you blessed that nations will call you blessed that God is setting you up so that you might have favor with men that God is opening doors on your behalf and I believe it right now come on I need a praying church hold on hold that music hold the music Miss Emma I need a praying and a rejoicing church if you believe it just begin to give God praise all over the building come on 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 I need a resurrection praise that God is lifting up our young people I need a resurrection praise that God is calling young people back to this church I need a resurrection praise that God is putting a fire on the inside of them that cannot be burnt out that cannot be quenched Come on, y'all got to go a little harder than that. Come on, just a couple more seconds. Believe that they are carrying the torch forward. Come on, the torch just has been passed. The torch has been passed. The torch has been passed. The torch has been passed. And now they're getting ready to help lead us forward. Come on, come on, come on. I feel a breakthrough in here. Come on, I feel a breakthrough in here. I feel a miracle in here. God is changing some minds. God is
is softening some hearts. God is doing something in this generation. Hey, yes, I, I. Hey, the power of God is here. Hey. Young people, look at me. Young people, look at me. What you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're experiencing right now is the cry of a church that's been longing for y'all. So don't ever believe that people don't want young people here. Y'all didn't hear me. Don't ever believe that people don't want young people here. It might not always be the most appealing, I get it, but don't believe that people don't want young people here. Now is the time that you've got to take your place. I'm talking to us. Now is the time we've got to take our place. So whatever gifts, and talents that you use at school, that you use in your organizations outside of here, bring it to the church. Everybody use social media. We shouldn't be struggling on social media. Are y'all with me? Today is a good day to make a rededication of your gifts. Even if it's just as simple as saying, you know what, I, I, I'm going to just call somebody. I'm going to just text them. You good? You need anything? If you need something, Granddaddy Holloway got all the money. Come on, somebody. <laughs> okay, he going, he, okay, I'm going too far. I get carried away. All right, here we go. But for real, for real, we, we believe in it, y'all. And I'm so excited. This church... Come on, church. We're so excited. Can y'all make some noise for our young people? For what God's going to do in y'all. I love you guys. I love you guys. All right. Dr. Holloway. All right. We getting up out of here. We getting up out of here. Has this not been a great resurrection Sunday? Woo! Woo! Uh, woo! Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Let, let's, let's pray. Let's pray our benediction. God, we thank you for your power that has been evident in this place this morning. Now, God, I ask that this same anointing, this same power, this same grace will begin to rest upon us as we go throughout this week. God, we thank you for what you're doing in this place called Friendship Chapel. And we call it blessed. Hey, I said, we call it blessed. We call it blessed. We call it blessed. We call it thriving. We call it alive and fully functioning. Amen. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Now, may the grace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with all of God's children now. And forevermore. Somebody, everybody, shout all over the building. Amen. 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 And amen. I love you, church. And there's nothing you can do about it. If I don't have your info, young people, I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it.